Forward TV. The world is thinking. But Martin Luther King Jr. on that day is celebrated for the end of that speech, the peroration, but few people remember the beginning of that speech when he said that he gathered in the shadow of Lincoln and talked about America owing to people of color something, the promise of democracy, and said we had a, we had a bounce check, basically, and given how the economy is now, ain't nobody too far from that. <laughs> King said that we have come to the nation's capital to cash a check a check which has been returned to us marked insufficient funds. But, he said, I refuse to believe that the great vaults of democracy are empty. Then Martin Luther King Jr. went on to talk about the whirlwinds of revolt would continue to shake the foundations of this nation until the American Negro was granted his or her citizenship rights. He talked about police brutality. He talked about the marvelous new militancy that was rising. He talked about Negroes in the South who couldn't vote and Negroes in the North who believed they had nothing for which to vote. And then in the wings, it was a black woman who inspired the dream discourse to begin with in Albany and another black woman closed out from participation as they were. Dorothy Height was there, one of the only female members of the big six, then seven civil rights organizations, closed out from talking, but the voice of black women will not ultimately be silenced. And from the wings, Mahalia Jackson cried out, tell him about the dream, Martin. And then for him, to that point in his speech, about a C plus, for anybody else, about an A plus, King discarded his notes and then began to soar on the beautiful wings of poetic invention and called upon metaphors and similes and tropes and analogies and stories and images that he had conjured in older times, but he did so with a, a renewed power because he believed in the American dream, because it was rooted in the deep and profound aspirations of America to be better than it was.